Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to my first ever Neon Dynasty draft. Before I dive in, I want to remind you that if you enjoy this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more draft content, and comment below with your questions, thoughts, and feedback. And let's get started. We're going to be talking through every pick, every play, so that you will know what to do in your own Neon Dynasty drafts. Okay, so our rare is Farewell. This card is not particularly good just because it's so expensive to exile all creatures or artifacts, but generally all creatures. So we're not going to be taking that here. Uh, our uncommons are pretty good. Touch the Spirit Realm is quite nice. You can exile an artifact or a creature, so for three mana. Or you can use the channel ability to potentially protect one of your creatures. So that's quite nice as well. Uh, it's a definitely a contender. There is also Kami's Flare, which is a great common removal spell. And I think it's a, maybe comparable to the Touch of the Spirit Realm, just because Touch is uh, going to be blown up by enchantment removal, which may be more common this set. Narika is a playable card as well, certainly good in the right deck, but I think it's worse than Touch. And then Kumano faces Kakazan is pretty cool as well. I think the best common is Calming Flare, so it's between that and Touch the Spirit Realm. And the, the land is also pretty good, but I'm going to take Touch the Spirit Realm just because it can take care of anything, uh, pretty much artifacts or creatures, and uh, yeah, the channel ability also shouldn't be underrated. And right off the bat, immediately rewarded, get pa getting past another very strong uncommon removal spell, Destroying artifacts or enchantments is going to take care of a lot of threats in the set anyway, and killing tap creatures means you're pretty much always going to be able to kill something with this, and then sometimes you'll even be able to get an extra 2-2 out of the deal, which is just, like, game-breakingly powerful. So, uh, it's not as surprising to see this in the pack because the rare is missing, so maybe they took a very powerful rare, but we're going to be taking Banishing Slash here. If it wasn't in the pack, uh, what I like to do is to choose between the best card that's in my color and the best card outside of my color. And so the best card in my color is probably this Narika Yamazaki, especially because if I attack with it, I can then use the Touch the Spirit Realm if I've had to like discard it earlier in the game for some reason. So that's a nice white card. I think it's better than the Moth Rider Patrol. Uh, Containment Construct can do good work, but I think it's worse than the Nor Narika. And then in the commons, I think Okiba Reckoner Rate is slightly better than Lethal Exploit. Greater Tanuki is also a good card. I am trying to hover, I'm trying to like hover over the cards for long enough that you can read them, but there are a lot of cards to talk about, so um, keep that in mind. I am I'm, I know that it's everything's new, so not everyone's as familiar with the cards as I am from all of my extensive stuff that I've done to research them and things of that nature. Okay, Invoke Justice. So five mana, but it is quadruple white, so that makes it very hard to cast. And you just return a permanent and then put four counters. So I'm not really high on this card just because quadruple white makes it like basically impossible to cast in a reasonable time frame. Colossal Sky Turtle can do good stuff, but it's a blue green and I'm not close to blue green. And I have two really good white cards. It's not just any two white cards. The Roadside Reliquary is nice because I already have an enchantment that might stick in play like the Touch of the Spirit Realm. And this can be sacrificed to draw me a card. Uh, Era of Enlightenment, another enchantment, but it's a little bit weaker, kind of slow. Kitsune Ace is fine. I think I'm going to branch into another color here, though. Uh, none of these cards are particularly good. So I think it's between the Roadside Reliquary and then my next, the next best card in the pack maybe is, like, Arm Guard Familiar. I think I'll take the land. I think the land is going to make my deck better. I think Invoke Justice is just too difficult to cast to be worth including. So I'm just going to take the Roadside Reliquary and be rel relatively happy with that. We'll keep in mind that we've seen a little bit of blue cards, maybe... And again, ooh, another interesting pack here. The Sky Blessed Samurai potentially plays really well with enchantment themes that I already have going on, like Big Flyer. There's also Igonjo Exemplar as a nice two drop that also is an enchantment creature and can reward me for samurai shenanigans. And then Prodigy's Prototype is really interesting as a, a vehicle payoff for a blue-white deck potentially. We did see a couple of potentially playable blue cards in that last pack. Getting a couple of artifacts would also make this Roadside Reliquary better. Uh, we have some good removals. It also makes Banishing Slash a little bit better. I also like M Moon Circuit Hacker a lot. I think I would take Igonjo Exemplar over it because it's a white card versus a blue card. This is what it says if you need to read it. Uh, but it's a very tough pick here, and uh, I'm not exactly sure which one is the most correct. I think Prodigy's Prototype is going to be my pick because if I want to play blue-white, I'm going to have to stake my claim on the gold cards. Sure, it's great to take Sky Blessed Samurai and leave myself completely flexible, but we are seeing a decent number of blue cards here, and if I do want to end up in blue-white, I really don't want to be passing that Prodigy's Prototype. Okay, moving on to the next pack here. Not really regretting my decision so far to take the prototype. I think so far everything is going pretty reasonable for me. Uh, Imperial Oath is a potential option. It makes a bunch of tokens that can be used to crew vehicles 
or just to attack past things. I'm not a fan of Bronze Cudgels, uh, just not a good ability, and so you shouldn't be playing this card. Imperial Oath uh, is making a bunch of 2-2s. Two it is an expensive card, so you don't want too many of these sorts of things, but taking one can be fine. There's a Combat Trick in Regent's Authority. Repel the Vile can do good stuff in the set, but I already have a good amount of removal. I think Moonfolk Puzzlemaker is also like not a great card, just too small stats-wise. Shattered Era is fine. I'll take Imperial Oath, though. Just a fine white card and uh, could potentially play well with my shenanigans. I also have this thing to make other tokens, and so maybe I can take some uh, potential cards that work well with tokens. Okay, so we see Goshintai. So this is a uh, shrine, which we aren't really going for that direction. We also kind of have some blue-white payoffs. And it looks like we're seeing a lot of good blue cards in this pack. There is the Futurist Sentinel, which is good with my other vehicle, because this can make pilots that can crew the Futurist Sentinel, just a 6-6 six, six, crew 3. We're not going to take this here. Hopefully we can get them a little bit later. There's Suit Up, which also plays well with vehicles. And then there's also Arm Guard Familiar as just a 2-drop, which I think I'm going to take here, because if you look at my curve, I don't have any 2-drop creatures right now. And you really want to make sure that even in your non-aggressive decks, you have like 5 of those. It's also an artifact to work with my Roadside Reliquary. So I'm going to take the Arm Guard Familiar over the Moon Snare Prototype, which I think would be my second pick. And uh, Suit Up would probably be third, followed by the Futurist Sentinel. I think Sentinel can be good with the Prodigy prototype and stuff, but I'm hoping to get those a little bit later. Okay, so we see a pick seven. So Kumano faces Kakazan is still in the pack, so potentially a red signal. There was also a red saga in the last pack, the Shattered States era, which is a solid card. But uh, in this pack, there's also a spinning wheel kick, which can do pretty good stuff if you're in green, because you'll have a big creature, and you can usually just, it's usually just four mana to kill a creature, but the fact that it has six mana kill two creatures is pretty good. There's another Imperial Oath, there's a Fade into Antiquity, so we're seeing some green here. I think we aren't going to be super, like, stoked to play multiple Imperial Oaths. I'm also not really a fan of Brute Suit, so I think we're going to take the Kumano and just hedge on red potentially being open. Okay. Not that I'm, like, super optimistic that red is open, but I think this card's quite good, and so I'd rather just leave my options open rather than taking a second 6-drop, uh, because I want to be able to take a 6-drop later on if I see a good one. Anchor to Reality is sweet if I get uh, enough of vehicle synergy, so that could be cool. There's also Wanderer's Invention, which is fine, and the Era of Enlightenment, which isn't my favorite card. Aki Ember Keeper can be good. I think the Ninja's Kunai is also nice if you're playing a deck that cares about Modified. I kind of want to try the Anchored to Reality. There is a cool combo in this set where you can get a 7-7 uh, seven, seven vehicle. So I'm going to take the Anchor on and speculate on it just in case I get that 7-7 seven, seven vehicle. It is a common after all. And pick 9, we wield Kitsune Ace. So that's a card that works with my Prodigy's Prototype quite well, giving it first strike. We also got back Kumano faces Kakazan. So maybe other players aren't like super high on the card um, because we didn't wheel the red removal spell from this pack. So I think I'm just going to take the Kitsune Ace to get myself another 2-drop that potentially works really well with my vehicle theme. There's also Blossoming Sands, but we haven't really taken any green cards yet. So we're going to take the Ace. And I'm not against playing Rider Patrol if I keep, if I get them a little bit later. I think the card could still be pretty good for me. We're seeing of the five of the six cards, two of them are blue, two of them are white, which is nice. Cyber Trespassers can do some stuff. I think Rider Patrol maybe isn't going to have the best home in my particular deck. But we'll still have to just wait and see. I could still move away from blue-white and play like red-white. In which case, uh, this being a warrior can be relevant. Okay, and now I'm just going to take another Kitsune Ace. Hopefully I get some more vehicles. Uh, maybe I actually would play the 3-mana four, three 4-3 four, three Vigilance vehicle now that I have a couple of Kitsune Aces. But I think before you have the Kitsune Ace to give it like first strike, you're not really super like thrilled to play that vehicle. Okay, Thornwood Falls. I'm going to take that over the Mnemonic Sphere. This card is pretty solid, but I think that it's better to have the option to potentially splash green than it is the, to have like a random two-drop artifact that isn't going to have a huge impact on my game plan, potentially. And we'll take the Moonfolk Puzzlemaker, so we're not going to pass a late blue card. Ooh, Suit Up came back. That's insane to me. This card looks really strong. It's able to turn my vehicles into creatures. And uh, getting one of these late means that my vehicle deck is looking a lot better. And last pick, Imperial Oath. Wow. That is crazy talk. Okay. So it looks like our deck is coming together. Uh, we have a couple of Imperial Oaths at the top end. Uh, I like, I'm glad we took the Prodigy's Prototype because it's kind of given our deck a direction. And uh, currently this Anchor to Reality is not making the cut. Looking at this pack, the best card is clearly Tatsunari. 
This card is absolutely fantastic, but it is really one of those cards that you want to be able to play on turn three, and we don't really have the ability to do that. That being said, this pack is incredibly weak for our blue-white deck, like Skybless Samurai is potentially an option. We have currently got only one enchantment, though. We could just speculate on the Tatsunari. It's not really a huge deal, and maybe we'll get past some good black cards or the ability to splash it, uh, because it is quite good. We don't really have the enchantments to support it either, but I think it's better than taking, like, Skybless Samurai, Repel the Vile, Planar Incision at this point in the draft. So, not a great pack for us, but we'll just uh, make the best of it and potentially try to splash Tatsunari. Okay, we're just going to put him in the sideboard for now. Though. Okay, so we see another vehicle in the form of Dragonfly Suit. We are going to want to get some vehicles so that we can use our, like, cards effectively, like our Kitsune's and stuff like that. But we're not, like gonna have to like force our way into it or anything prosperous thief is a three mana three two that can just get treasure tokens when it hits them is pretty solid just on its face value um and it's a cheap card i think wounds near specialist is fine disruptor is good if you're playing a ninja's deck the friend the moths can be okay i think it's between the prosperous thief though and the dragonfly suit and i'm gonna take the thief i think it's just a rock solid card Sometimes you'll ninjutsu it. It works well with the Moth Rider Patrol for that. And I know I'm hovering over the cards really quickly, but there is a lot to talk about. Dragonfly Suit, 3 mana, 3, 2 vehicle with Crew 1. Prosperous Thief, 3 mana, 3, 2 creature that can just do stuff. I like Moonsnare Specialist as well. I'm not really trying to go for a Shrine deck. So I'm just going to take the Thief. I think it's just a good card. Okie doke. So now we have an interesting pick here. So there's Patchwork Automaton, which works well with artifacts. How many artifacts do we have? Right now, I have two artifacts. So not really in the market for this right now. There is Circuit Mender, which is just a great three drop. It's an artifact creature. It draws you a card when it dies, gains you some life. There's also Moonsnare Prototype for potential ramp shenanigans. And then there is Igonjo Exemplar as a two drop creature. And then there's Uncharted Haven, if I really wanted to try and splash this Tatsunari. So a lot of options here. I already have a couple of two drops, so three two drop creatures, so I don't need to prioritize the Iganjo Exemplar as much. And the Uncharted Haven is going to be good regardless of whether or not I decide to splash. So I think I'm going to take the Uncharted Haven and uh, potentially just leave myself way more flexible in the draft. Wowza. Eater of Virtue seems really good to me. I'm actually shocked to see this still in the pack uh, because in any deck that is aggressive, you just give your creatures plus two plus oh. And then you can start just giving those keyword abilities as well. And Eater of Virtue is especially good in my deck because I have two Imperial Oaths. Tokens work really well with equipment, especially ones that are so cheap to use, because all of a sudden I just easily have all of my guys as four twos, which is really powerful. And they'll just give vigilance to all my other stuff. Um, if my Moth Rider Patrol would need, yeah. So this is just a great pickup for my deck. Sure, Tranquil Cove and Uncharted Haven would be good for my mana. Thirst for Knowledge may be good. Moon Snare Prototype may be good. But Eater of Virtue is a very powerful card. Definitely worth taking here, and uh, I'm really glad that I have these two Imperial Oaths now. I was considering cutting one of them, but now I don't think that's very likely. Okay, in this pack, uh, there is an Ecologist's Terrarium, which could be used if I wanted to splash. There is Twin Shot Sniper as an absolutely fantastic card. It's really just a two-for-one, and uh, but it does kind of require... You really want it to just be a normal red deck to play it so that you can make use of the channel ability, because that is an important aspect of the card. Not a huge fan of Futurist Operative. I think the main pick is between Moon Circuit Hacker, Ecologist Terrarium, and Searchlight Companion. Let's look at my curve real quickly. I have a decent number of three drops. I still only have three two drops. I'm going to take the Moon Circuit Hacker. Even if you aren't enabling Ninjutsu, it's still a good card to have in your deck. And I have Moth Rider Patrol and a couple of ninjas, and so that's just pretty solid synergy. When you have the option between a solid card and a solid card that's in your... When you have an option between a good card and a solid card in your color, it's often best to just stay within color. Here, I think I'm going to take Tamiyo's Completion. I don't have removal spells right now. Getting a removal spell now is a pretty good time for it. Pick six in the second pack, especially because I only have currently um, Banishing Slash and the Touch of the Spirit Realm, which are my, some of my first picks. It's another enchantment to work with my Roadside Reliquary, which is another reason to focus on mana fixing so that I can justify playing this land, uh, which hopefully can draw me some cards in the late game. But yeah, Tamiyo's Completion over the Ace. I also don't have a ton of vehicles right now except for the Ace to be crewing. Wow, so we see a Mobilizer mech. Um, it depends on how likely I think I am going to be to being able to enable my vehicle synergies, but I'm going to say that pack three could be really good for vehicles, and the fact that this can crew your other vehicles while also being like a nice little card to work with my uh, suit up 
and my prototype means I'm, pro I'm just going to take the mobilizer mech over another Tamiyo's completion. And just see how far this vehicle synergy goes. Because it's important when you're early in a format to just kind of see how, how good the decks end up being. Um, the Modern Age is a card I really want to try. I think it looks really good. Raito Sentinel, fine as a way to crew up some of my vehicles. Kitsune Ace, I already have a couple. Um, Disruption Protocol is much less good when Channel is in the format because they might just use a Channel ability and you can't counter that. Moonsnare Specialist as another ninja, but I'm just going to take the Modern Age. I really want to try this card out. It looks quite good to me and uh, just gives me another thing to do on turn two. Okay, was not surprised to not get anything from this pack. I'm just going to take the Shrine Steward. I don't mind passing these cards to the person near me. Um, I kind of like to tell them, hey, maybe you want to draft a green deck. Ooh, perfect. We get the Dragonfly Suit back. Moonsnare Specialist is a good card, but it's not really for my deck. I only have a couple like cheap creatures, so I'm willing to play something like Moon Circuit Hacker that I'm more happy playing as just a cr creature. Similarly with Prosperous Thief, I'm fine just playing this as a 3-drop, but I just want to try and enable some of my vehicle synergies, and uh, I think that this Dragonfly Suit can be a really key part of that. Okay, Patchwork Automaton, how many artifacts do I have now? Five artifacts, still not really quite at the level of artifacts that I would want for that. So I'm going to take the Moonsnare prototype as another form of interaction, or potentially a way to ramp up to some of my stuff. Wow, we get the land. So Thirst for Knowledge is a great card, but as I was saying, I don't have a ton of artifacts. I also kind of want to be casting my artifacts, and the more dual lands I get, the better this Roadside Reliquary becomes, where I just don't have to worry about casting my spells. I have a lot of heavy colors on both sides of the thing so starts like companion now so we have a deck after two packs pretty much which is pretty nice pack three let's see what we are working with here so not the greatest pack uh there's a scoured barons in the pack which would maybe let us splash tatsunari a little easier we have four enchantments to maybe enable tatsunari there's also a selfless samurai which whenever a samurai or warrior controls attacks alone Gains lifelink, and I can sack it to give another creature indestructible, which is a really nice ability. Like a 2-2 lifelinker, kind of. So how many samurais do I have? I have one warrior and no samurais, but I do have these imperial oaths, which make samurais. So I think I'm going to take the 2-drop here. Uh, other than that, the land is in consideration and the moth rider patrol, because I do have a couple ninjas. But I think I have few enough ninjas that just running one moth rider patrol will probably be optimal. So yeah, I have three vehicles right now. So I could get a couple more of this pack, maybe. Ooh. Hinata. So if I wanted to splash red, I could get a 4-4 Flying Trampler that make my spells cost one less for each target and my opponents cast one more for each target. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, I have Uncharted Haven as a way to splash. I don't really want to be splashing. I kind of just want to take the Igonto Exemplar now, get another two-drop. Three, four, five, six, seven. I have a bunch of two drops already. Probably going to wheel that ace. I'm not going to splash. I don't think in this deck. I'm just going to stick with my two color deck. Hinata's nice, but it's not worth destabilizing my mana. And then there's a papercraft decoy. It's a nice two drop as well. But I'm just going to take the Igonjo Exemplar. And I might just start cutting some Kitsune Aces because I don't have all that much synergy with them. Okay, another Uncharted Haven is nice. Just helps my mana out. If I knew I was going to get this Uncharted Haven, maybe I would have taken the red card for the splash, because then I can just play, like, one mountain and kind of get away with it. But then again, I do have a lot of blue two drops and white early drops, so I'm not looking to play the Searchlight Companion, even though it does work decently with my ninjas, and it can, like, crew my dragonfly suits. Ooh. Okay. So there's When We Were Young, which I can pretty much enable pretty easily, but I don't think I'm really in the market for it. There's Behold the Unspeakable as well, though, which I think I am in the market for. Just a big flyer that also draws me a bunch of cards, and it looks quite powerful. This Anchor to Reality play isn't looking like it's going to come together. I don't have any big artifacts to go get. So I'm just going to cut it for now. Add this Behold the Unspeakable. So, let's see. I have... And so I already have an equipment, so that makes me less interested in the Katana, even though it would be pretty good with two Imperial Oaths. Runaway Trashbot, plus one plus one for each artifact and enchantment. 
six enchantments, seven artifacts. So this could be pretty sizable. I kind of want to just try taking the Futurist Sentinel, though. Just to see how that turns out in a vehicle deck. Because it seems like the sort of card that would fit like nicely with my other synergy pieces I've got going on. Even though it's not a great card on its own. This is more of an experimental pick. I think the Trash Bot would be a fine pick as well. But I want to be able to try the Vehicles thing out and see how good it is. And I can always just sub that card out if I want to. Sure, I'll take the Golden Tail Disciple. Maybe I'll want some Life Link. I'm not really interested in a combat trick right now. Okay. Let's look at my curve again. So my curve doesn't really go that high up. I do like this suit up, but I got one of them last pick, the other pack. I also like the Modern Age. Mm, and the Koi is pretty good with eight artifacts. I'm going to try taking the Modern Age again. I just want to try the card out. I, I could have taken Suit up there as well. That would have been a fine pickup, I think. So Moon Snare Prototype, again, is an option. Reality Heist is not a card I'm interested in. Could also consider Wanderer's Intervention. Yeah, let's try the Moon Snare Prototype again. Punished. Sentinel is a pretty sizable creature. Not really interested in the Moth Rider. I'm going to try the Wanderer's Intervention. Maybe how many creatures do I have? Ten? Maybe I do just need another creature. I like this one because it can crew my vehicles. Also, my creature count is a little bit underrated because... Ooh, cast artifact spells. How many artifacts do I have again? Ten. Yeah, I'm probably not going to play all of those, though. Guardians of Abora is a much better three drop than the other one because it can crew my vehicles way more effectively. So I'm not really in the market for Kitsune A's, despite the fact that I have some vehicle stuff. It's just not really going to do what I needed to do. Because I don't have any, like, great synergies with it. And a lot of my vehicles are Crew 3. So let's construct this deck. So I think I might even play all three Imperial O's, because I do have the Eater of Virtue. So I have a few vehicles, four vehicles. I'm going to try playing all of them just to see how it looks when I try when I draw them. I'm, I don't think the future Sentinel is a very good card, but I want to try them out. I'm going to cut the Golden Tail Disciple. I considered playing the Prodigy's Prototype. Um, so it looks like I have nine creatures according to that, but this is a creature, this is a creature, these two are creatures. So, like, that's nine, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So I have way more creatures than it's giving me credit for, which is fine. I'm just going to cut all the Kitsune Aces. I have one, two, three, four, five, six good two drops. I've got the Moth Rider Patrol to work with my Prosperous Thief and my Moon Circuit Hacker. I think I'm going to cut it. I don't think I need it. And I'm going to cut one Moon Snare Prototype because I'm mostly just going to be using it for its interaction ability. And I think this is going to be the deck that I start with. Um, looks pretty good to me. I have great mana, and I have a roadside reliquary when I have a ton of enchantments and artifacts, so we'll see how that does. I could even go up to 18 lands, but I think because of the modern ages, I'll be fine with 17. So this is 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Let's look at color distribution. Slightly heavier blue, even though I do have double white. I'm happy having slightly towards blue. And that is going to do it for the first deck I've drafted. Let's see how it performs in the matches. Before I get to the games, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons who support my content at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas, and a special shout out to those at the credits level. If you've never heard of Patreon, it is a site where you, the viewer, can go and pledge an amount of your choosing each month to my content to help me continue to make videos and also gain access to some Patreon exclusive rewards like access to my Neon Dynasty card by card tier list. If Patreon is something that sounds like it would interest you, it's also worth noting that there's no long-term commitment, so you don't have to lock in, and you can check it out, cancel at any time, or rejoin the Patreon if you decide to do so. You can find more information at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas, linked in the description down below. But without further ado, let's get to the matches.
Welcome to round number one. We have a great hand. We're going to get to try a lot of the cards I'm excited for. Getting to see how Modern Age plays out. This is a card I'm pretty happy with. I don't know if I'll play it on turn two now that I have a Samurai to play on turn two that can start gaining me life. Okay. Against an Ecologist's Terrain, they're fixing their mana. Nice, nice. So White Green is our first foe. So if this thing goes unblocked, I can ninjutsu this in, get a treasure token, and then play it again. Or play the Modern Age. To start making sure I hit my land drops. Oh. Okay. The Mobilizer Mech. Let's just play the Thief. The next turn I can play Modern Age if I really want to loot to make sure I try and hit a land drop. Sure. Hitting land drops is important in Limited, so I'm going to do this. Perfect. And then I'm going to discard... I think Imperial Oath looks like it's going to be very good this game. I think I'm going to get rid of the Raito Sentinel. I think it's just my weakest card. So now I've got a 3-4 that can also crew up my Dragonfly. So this is looking pretty solid for me so far. In Modern Age, keep in mind, it's going to become a Flyer as well. I might end up discarding the Guardians of Avora or the Imperial Oath. Okay. So they're kind of going all in on that to some degree. But it's not actually a huge concern right now. I can still block it. They are letting it tap for mana though, which can be scary. Okay, other enchantment creatures get plus one, plus one, so they don't have any of those. Copy an artifact, activate or triggered ability for an enchantment source, so it doesn't really do anything right now. It's just a generic two mana two two at the moment. Okay, and I get a loot. Well, we're definitely keeping Eater of Virtue, and because I have Eater of Virtue, I want to keep my Imperial Oath, so that means I'm going to get rid of Guardians of Aboro. Even though I'm a little bit wary about leaving behind a way to crew my vehicles, I think this is just the optimal line. And this thing will be able to crew my Dragonfly suit, which can then crew the Mobilizer mech if I need to. And I don't have to do anything. I can just wait. I've got this thing coming down, which will really set me up nicely. And I essentially have a 3-4 and a 3-2 flyer to hold things down on blocks. And a 2-3 on the way. Okay, the Tales of Master Sushiro. That can be pretty scary. Oh, and they can double trigger it. That Weaver of Harmony is going to do some work. I'm glad I have some interaction spells in my deck to deal with the Moth Rider Patrol. Otherwise, it could have become a problem. So leaving their shields down a little bit, I can get a big hit in.
slightly unfortunate here. So I can offer that trade. So, not an ideal sequence here for me. The uh, Imperial Oaths coming down would have been really nice. But once they do come down, I'll be able to hold the ground pretty effectively, I think. And I have a lot of flying power, and they only have one flyer. So if I can find an interaction spell for this Moth Rider patrol, it could be really good for me. And if my Vector Glider trades off, then this thing gives flying. Or if it dies in some way. Well, that's just gravy. I mean, they might have a combat trick, but even so. Trading a 4-3 for a 2-3 and bu permanently buffing up my Eater of Virtue. to give all of my creatures flying. It's pretty devastating. Okay, that put a counter on it. Still currently trading. The same is true for indestructible. How can the equipped creature die? Oh, I guess they give it minus X, minus X. Let's read that card. Okay. Okay, this is going to be good. So I didn't draw the land I wanted, but this is a good one. They hold this guy back as a blocker. And I can create a couple of pilots. And deal five damage. Oh, it's whenever one or more attacks. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I figured they'd block that one. Oh, it's an enchantment creature. I was like wondering why I was a 6-6 six, six instead of a 5-5. Five, five. But I'm at a bit of a precarious life total. They can hit me for 10 here. Okay. If they tap their Moth Rider Patrol, they leave themselves dead on board. Oh no, because that's Vigilance, right. Do I want to block that? Probably not. So 
little bit unfortunate in how this is working out for our hero, getting stuck and unable to cast those. I'm still going to cast this Modern Age, though. I have to loot away an Imperial. Hopefully I can find a removal spell. Well, that's unfortunate. So I now have an interaction spell for that. So if I can survive, I believe I can win. Or I can come close to winning. I, I'm not quite at the damage threshold I need to win, unfortunately. Quite unfortunate. I can block, block. Yeah. Oh, that didn't work the way I thought it did. What? Oh, okay. So Eater of Virtues doesn't work with the Saga. I'm sure somebody was getting confused on that, but I guess it flips back into a Saga when it gets exiled. That was an unfortunate game. I think I was favored to win for a lot of it. If I hit a land drop, I would have uh, been able to play my all my 2-2s two out, and then I would have really been in great shape. But they basically just had their rare that let them get like four counters a turn, and I couldn't compete with it because I had missed my sixth land drop for too long. Definitely an argument for running 17 in this for running 18 in this deck because I have ways to use it, but that's just gonna happen sometimes. You're gonna miss your land drop. Feels tough to lose those ones when I felt so far ahead. Also, Glad I learned how that card interaction worked. Also, if I just drawn my interaction spell a turn earlier, I think I would have gotten them. Okay, this hand looks great. It's got both colors. It's got a roadside reliquary, so I'm not going to get flooded again. Overall, just a great hand. Also, I didn't know how the prodigy thing worked. Uh, I sacrificed one of my creatures to essentially get a 1-1 one, one, and deal 5 damage, which is probably still worth it, but I thought that I was going to get a 1-1 one, one for each attacking vehicle. Just uh, something you learn. Opponent is deciding whether to go first. That's a tough decision. Not. Uh, you always want to go first. Oh, they're deciding whether to keep. Never mind. It's a uh, premier draft. They don't get to choose whether to go first. I will keep this hand. First time seeing how reconfigure works, potentially. Two drop, three drop, reconfigure this up, make a 5-5. Five, five. Seems decent. Ooh, this is a really cool, like, boy pond and, like, little terrace. You'd love to see it on the background. Whoa, it's a simulation. I wonder how long it would have taken people to figure that one out had they not witnessed it. Okay. Lead with our planes, because we do have a double white card we could draw in our deck. So, potentially. Like, if they played some crazy enchantment on turn two and we would happen to top deck our spell, we might want to kill it. card is not particularly good. It's mostly just so we can crew our vehicles, like a worse Guardians of Aboro, but maybe we should just not play it at all. Okay, go Shintai. So far, a pretty straightforward game. If I'd drawn Tamiya's completion last game, I uh, would have won. 
I had this another removal spell. I was thinking mostly of like my exile card and things like that, but and banishing light, those sorts of things. But yep, they're playing three colors. Interesting. Maybe they're playing a five color shrine deck. This equipment also feels pretty safe because it gives ward two, which means a lot of stuff can't kill my guy after I've equipped. This is a nice little synergy in blue that I didn't really notice. Huh. We'll see if they pay the one. Kappa Tech Wrecker, okay. Death Touch, eh? Mm -hmm. So they decided to hold up two mana instead of activating this thing. Now that they have a death touch creature, I don't really want to suit up my guy. Those would have been nice. Pretty much the oath and the behold would have been real good, but the other ones kind of take it or leave it. The reason I milled myself is because they may have graveyard synergies, and also it's just good to know. Okay, I played the card that can still block Capotech Wrecker. Okay, Searchlight Companion. I guess the I don't really need to play the four mana six six vehicle because Prodigy's prototype doesn't really reward that vehicle attacking anyway. It could just kind of be self contained. So you all shave that after this game and try it on a different card. Wow, that is not good for me. It's going to trade anyway, so I might as well save the damage. This costs three to sacrifice. So if I put Tamiya's completion on something, I'll draw an extra card. So if they play something big this turn, I'm gonna use Tamiya's completion on their end step no matter what. So I can draw extra cards. Uh, 
Jeez Louise, they're just countering me beautifully. I'm just gonna tap this thing. It does lose its abilities, which is nice. Big draw. Hmm. Some would describe that as suboptimal. I would tend to agree with that evaluation. Hmm. Do I have cards left in my deck that would get me out of this? Ooh, Imperial Oath fight. Imperial Oath followed by something to deal with a flyer. Not Dragonfly suit, unfortunately. Huh. Hmm, interesting. I guess uh, that's how it goes in Limited sometimes. They kill all of your creatures with their sick value on their dealing damage to your creatures, and then uh, you just don't get to cast your spells. Hmm. Well, I am going to cut the 3-3 three, three now that I... This, this 4 mana 6-6 six, six, crew 3 now that I better understand how the vehicles work. Futurist Sentinel. Hmm. What do I want to add? Golden Tail Disciple? I want to try a different card that I don't have access to so I can get as much experience as possible. I'll try Golden Tail, maybe. Just a little bit of life gain. Makes the world go round. I'm not disappointed by either of those losses, to be honest. Just like the first one's just like how it goes sometimes. You just can't cast your curve topper and they can, so it goes poorly. This one should go a lot better though. We've kind of got the synergy already. I think I'm gonna name white with this. Ah, time to get a little tricksy. We can turn our Prodigy's prototype into a creature. They will not expect it. So they've got this white-red synergy, maybe. 100% blocking. Phew! Oh, and they missed a land drop. Uh, GG, my friend. Arm guard familiar because it's got ward and this this thing can crew my vehicle. We're on the board. We won a game. Let's go. Heck yeah! I knew it would work out in the end. Never doubted it for a second. The deck is clearly great. Unbeatable. 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 And thus the win streak commences. Whew. Regardless of winning or losing in draft, it's about like solving the puzzle you're given in each situation. And I think there were um, some pretty good puzzles solved. Pretty solid puzzle solving. If I do say so myself. I mean, the first game I think I played pretty well. Second game played pretty well. Third game clearly played incredibly well to get the W. And it's been cool to play with the cards. Also learning that the... Uh, Sagas, if you exile them under your sword, do not give their abilities. It's nice to know. Though, to be fair, I was going to lose that game anyway. So, such is life. And also getting to realize that the Prodigy's prototype doesn't trigger on each vehicle you control attacking. So, worth knowing. Worth knowing for sure. Bum, 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 bum. Ah, yes. 
Ooh, you love to see it. We're going to keep this hand. I'm not going to play the prototype on turn one. I don't have anything crazy to ramp into, I don't think. I guess I do have Imperial Oath that I could ramp into, but I like having the interaction. It's tough. It's very tough. Hmm. I'm going to try playing it on turn one. We'll see how that goes. Because that way I can play this on turn five. I'm going to play this because this guy, I don't really want to trade it with the papercraft decoy right now. Yes, the plan works perfectly. I'd rather have an extra planes. I'll play this to trade with their unstoppable ogre. Ogres are not like cakes. Whew. Dodging some damage. Nice. I'm going to play my dragonfly suit because then I can use that to cast my imperial oath next turn. And this can stop the papercraft decoy from attacking, and then I could crew up my vehicle to trade with the golden tail. Sure. I guess they need to draw a card, but I'm fine if they spend their whole turn doing that. Don't want, don't really want, yes want. I will double block this. Um, trade a two for two for two, three lifelink. Playing this is a land, it did definitely do some work. Oh, man. I shouldn't just play the other Imperial Oath, should I? Actually, I totally should. It's just so inefficient, and it sets up my next draw step. Using suit up would be nice, but... That's silly. Just another one. I guess I had enough guys that I could have just like triple blocked this thing and I still do the exact same trade. Oh, they're playing black mana as well. There is an uncommon that deals two to every creature. That's not the best. Sad day. We're looking forward to using that suit up. Mobilizer mech, certainly good. Modern Age seems good as well. Eh, probably not. I'm less sure about that one. Yeah, I don't have any cards in hand to discard, so. Probably just another flyer. That'd be good. So I have nine two two vigilance creatures in play. 
And they have five blockers. So at the very least, they're getting for eight. Okay, so if I just attacked with everything, they go block five of your ground guys, take eight, ten. And they lose this and this. They could also gain two, so then I would lose. Slightly more. Still totally worth it. Yeah, like, I lose two of my guys jump attacking, but I also kill their flyer. So now I have three flyers, still have six ground creatures. They are in trouble. Ooh, neat. That's pretty cool. I have to make two one ones. So they're just dead on board. I just crew up my flyers, attack. Let's see if we want to make any tweaks to the deck, now that we have seen a little bit of the meta. Clearly a master of the meta already, know everything I need to know. I'm kidding. I will say, I felt like interaction and stuff like the Tamiyo thing that we had in play that game was really good. The mana ramp was great. Casting our, uh, these bad boys a turn ahead of schedule was great. Kind of want to find room for a second Moonsnare prototype. My creature count at 8 feels low. I don't think Raito's Sensible is any good. I'm going to just do that. Now they don't have another big crew cost to fill. This card has felt pretty nice. Not that hard to crew if I build my deck a little bit around it. Puzzle Maker. It's a way to scry. I feel like the combat trick would be pretty good, but I think that I already have a suit up, and that's kind of the only combat trick I have room for, given my deck's lack of creatures. But I really want to put this Moonsnare prototype in, so let's try that. I kind of want to try the one drop, like the fox one that can tap things. Fox warrior. But it doesn't like seem like it has that much synergy in my deck. Maybe it just like is a nice glue piece that kind of holds the whole ship together. It can tap things. It can like work with my random ninjutsu stuff. Um, it's an evasive creature to put my um, thing of above on. So maybe I'll, maybe after this game I'll try the fox instead of one of the Tamios things, just so I can try more cards early on in the format. Beautiful hand. Gonna name white. Ooh. I'll offer up the trade, maybe? No, I'm not gonna do that. Hmm. No, it's not a trade. I just hit him for three. Nice. That's why this Ganjo Exemplar is so good. Okay. 
Seems worth it. Get rid of it early. Combat tricks are pretty good in those situations. Ooh, they need to they need to hit lands, or maybe they need a land of a specific color. They're also playing blue white. Interesting. This is a cast trigger. I thought it was just an ETB trigger. Good to know. Sure. So I can use Touch the Spirit Realm to flicker my card and make it safe again. Not really super, like, in the market to do that, though. At least not without substantial upside, which I think I can get. I can channel this, discard it, Exile this thing, return it to play. And then crew it and block their guy. Oh no, I, I messed it up. It comes back at the next end step. Whoops. I done messed up. Good to know. Good to know. It's important to remember this is day one, so there are cards that I have not used yet. Yikes. Ouch. Gotta play my land in case I draw my samurai card. So I did mess up with this thing. I thought I would be able to use it to eat this creature, which turned out to not be the case. So I can sack this to draw two cards. Got the win. Nice. Whew. Securing at least a 50% win rate in my first foray into the format. Whew. These removal spells have felt very key. Like, maybe I just want to play as many of these. Tamio guys, as I can get my hands on the Moonsnare prototypes. They're not Tamio guys. Uh, what else do I got? Maybe the deck's just fine. Maybe I don't need this guy. It does have synergy with the equipment, which I don't really need more synergy with. And it's some ninja stuff, but I think we'll be fine. I'm glad I cut that 3 3 defender. Now that I don't have as many crew 3 cards, I don't think I need it. Okay. Let's get this dub. Okay, nice. The Moonsnare prototype showing its power once more. Gonna help me get empty handed so I can use this Behold the Unspeakable. And Arm Guard Familiar is gonna be able to stick around because it's got Ward too, so I'll be able to make sure I can cast my stuff.
Here we come. Interesting prototype doing a lot of work. Okay, I'm really worried about them having a board sweeper of some kind. Okay, I can play this thing and getting my hand even closer to being empty. I could just play this and save this for interaction. I think that's better. Because this can, like, force them to get rid of their blocker and I just get to hit him an extra turn. Okay, Fang of Shigeki. Here we go. If I'd played the Moonsteer prototype, I'd have less cards in hand. But I still don't think I'd be able to get below the threshold. And now I have interaction and stuff. Oh, they have a pump, pump spell. Okay. Sure. And I don't get to gain life. This feels bad, man. Ooh, Eater of Virtue is going to be good. I should have done that slightly differently, so make sure I could equip it this turn to put him on a two-turn clock. I'll discard Guardians of the Bora. Yeah, that would have been an aggressive attack. I can tap the Eater of Virtue itself. Nice. Bum, 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 bum. I, I was considering putting it on my flyer, but then putting on the ward creature makes a lot more sense. If they can't interact with it. And also, the flyer would not give the Eater of Virtue flying, because that's not how it works. We are learning. Whew. This is why it's important to not get rattled by a couple of losses. Keep faith. Also, Prodigy's prototype is kind of insane. It's performing very well. It just makes a couple of 1-1s, one which turn out to be, like, really relevant cards. And also the Tamiyo's card has been really... Not the Tamiyo's card. What's it called? Oh, my gosh. Moonsnare Prototype. Why do I keep... <laughs> the artwork is too too strong. Moonsnare Prototype has been really good. Okay, nice. This is a good hand. Get a white mana. Thief plus suit up means they're going to really want to block it. No, you're eternal late, samurai. It's okay. I forgive you.
I'll just filter through my deck a little bit, get rid of one of their cards, get a two for one. Even drew a tap land for max value. Okay, Tails of Master Sushiro. That could be a problem. So that's an artifact, so I can get an extra 2-2 out of the deal if I use... Yeah, I'm going to do it. I think it's worth it. Okay, so I play this. This will target artifact or creature. No! Greater Tanuki! I'm willing to try. No, another greater tanuki. Whew, nice draw, nice draw. I'm just going to try to go for max damage. I have modern age, so I'm going to hold this land. Two copies actually of modern age. Oh, yikes. Well, this thing's going to get scary quickly. This may be it for me. I might just be dead now. I fought valiantly, but in the end, it didn't even matter. Wow, just playing two shrines after playing two Tanukis. That's devastating. Getting two shrines into play is kind of nuts, though. So. Yep. I think I played this game to the best of my abilities. Oh, 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 maybe there's a chance. Are you kidding me? You've got to be kidding me. They have a reach creature? That is nuts, so that's not fair. Not fair. I tried. You've got to be kidding me. If they hadn't had a reach creature, I still kind of had a shot. Now I'm just dead. Still, pretty good performance for the deck. Never gonna be able to get through this thing, so. Might as well jump with that thing. The 
fact that they had both shrines was really what did it. Also the fact that they drew uh, two less lands than me. Not over till it's over. Yep, this one's pretty much over. If I can hold on, this thing will become a creature. If I can gain a little bit of life or deal with the ghost Shintai or this thing. I think this has trample is a real issue. So that means I might as well double luck. I'm just dead no matter how I spin it. So I'm going to be drawing five cards, and I'm going to be at four life. I'm going to be at two life. If they didn't have that thing in play, I would have been able to maybe do something. Dang it. Close one, but no cigar. Whew. Oh, I can't believe they had those two shrines to close it down at the end. Oh well. Hard fought battles. I felt like if I had drawn a few more spells earlier on, I would have been able to close the deal, but let it a little bit, and uh, that's kind of how the games went, was... My deck did really well when I drew the right number of lands, and uh, then I flooded a, game, a couple games and got mana screwed. Well, not mana screwed, I had five lands, I just didn't quite get the cards I needed in that other game. But yeah, really awesome deck. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, remember to hit that thumbs up button to, and subscribe to the channel for more draft content. Comment below with your questions, thoughts, and, fee and feedback. Uh, and uh, yeah. If you did make it all the way to the end of this video, in the comments section down below, leave hashtag behold the vehicles, because those were some pretty, pretty cool synergies we had. Um, also, Tamio, hashtag Tamio's prototype, because I kept miss saying that and just saying the Tamio card, even though it doesn't have Tamio in the name. Um, but yeah, let's just talk about some of the cards. Uh, Imperial Oath definitely seemed to perform well, but mostly when I had stuff to do with the tokens, like equip them, or use them to crew vehicles or things of that nature. I don't know if I would rather like enjoy having this card if I didn't have like Eater of Virtue. Behold was pretty good. Uh, Tamiya's completion just felt like removal was pretty nice. The Dragonfly suit hit pretty hard. I was really impressed by the prototype. Modern Age was good. Uh, I didn't get to play the hacker at all. I liked the Mobilizer mech. I don't know how good it is overall, but it seemed pretty good. And then that game we got to go Banishing Slash and get a 2-2 was insane. Like two, ton two mana Flame Tongue Kavu. Touch the Spirit Realm. Pretty good card, and Moonstair Prototype and Eater performed great. The lands felt good, the Reliquary was a nice addition, and uh, yeah, any cards we tried from here, um, I don't really think you're going to need this card in your vehicle decks, or the Kitsune Aces, maybe. But yeah, if you did enjoy this video, uh, in addition to all that stuff I recommended before, and if you would like to support my content, you can do so via the Patreon, patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. Uh, patrons gain access to my tier list for Neon Dynasty and also some other cool rewards. But most importantly, patrons are helping me continue to make videos and content and things of that nature. So I guess content kind of encompasses all things of that nature. But yeah, if you are enjoying my content and want to help me continue making it, Patreon is the best way to do so. You get to choose the amount that you pledge each month. You can cancel it any time if your circumstances change. But yeah, Patreon's a great place to go to support my work. You can also find a link in the description, uh, the Nik oh, Nikolai Bolas Discord server, which is the place to go for talking about all things magic. You can find links to my articles, which are free to read. Uh, and you can find links to... Um, 
um, Nikolai Bolos merchandise, the Nikolai Bolos Twitch stream. Now that there's a set to play, I'll be streaming more. So you can find the Twitch stream link in the description down below. If you do have Amazon Prime and you uh, would like to support my content at no extra cost to yourself, you can use your Amazon Prime gaming subscription on my Twitch stream. It all goes towards the same content cookie jar and it's at no extra cost to yourself. So that's a pretty cool way to support my work. And uh, yeah, just all that cool stuff linked in the description down below. That is going to do it for this video, uh, though. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm really excited to dive into more Neon Dynasty with all of you folks. Anyway, that's going to do it, though. And I will talk to you next time.